Hello, everybody. Hope everyone's all right. Put my laptop here. Good to see Jean here. I'm tune around the bands a little bit today. Have fun. This is all right. Uh, move this here. And move this here. And here we go. Da -da -da -dum. Da -da -da -dum. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Checking out this stuff with the uh, Air Spy HF Plus Discovery. And today for the tuning of the bands, we're going to tune around, but with a um, St. Gian ATS-909X2. One of the reasons why I preferred this one today is because what is nice with the console when I actually inject the audio is that the St. Gian has a line out. So um, I like the Texan PL990, uh, H501X, and the St. Gian uh, ATS-909X2 for that capability of having a line out. I got a few others with a line out. I got a Grandic G5. Um, trying to remember the other ones, but um, we'll uh, choose them upon that a little bit. But not only that, um, honestly, or some of them I'll just use the uh, the, the headphone jack to uh, inject the audio into the console. It's, it's also going to work. So, hey, everybody, welcome aboard. Nice to have all of you here. This is the uh, shortwave radio show. We are here twice a week, and we talk about radio, and shortwave radio in particular, where we try to uh, just enjoy the moments of radio. And uh, it's uh, always nice to be here, and always cool to be here. Uh, cheers, everybody. Vodka Cranberry, the usual drink of the channel. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up today also is uh, sounds of shortwave. A lot of people asking about, you know, um, the uh, different sounds um, of the digital modes. So uh, there's a really cool page, which is the uh, sing single wiki page, which is... Uh, Really nice, the signal identification um, page. I'll share it already here, and I'll share it probably later when people come in. Um, it's a great page for identifying what you're listening to. So here it is in the uh, in the uh, in the chat room. Also, something coming up. At the end of the month, now last Sunday of the month, we were supposed to do uh, this month the amateur radio show, uh, but it's going to be kind of something different, um, and we're going to talk about it. We have a uh, collaboration thanks to Sheldon Harvey of the uh, Canadian International DX Club, and we're going to talk about it because at the end of the month, on March 27th, on the Sunday, March 27th, we will have the first official SWL channel Zoom meeting. What that means is that instead of a show on Sunday the 27th, it's going to be a place where if you want to register, we'll join together and talk. Maybe I'll be able to see some of your faces that I've never seen before. You don't have to use a camera, by the way. Uh, you can even just join in, you know, no camera, no sound, just to be there and, and see what people are uh, going to talk about. But um, it's going to be something interesting uh, to uh, to uh, try. Um, and so the details are coming up. I'm going to share the link to this at the end of the month. So if some of you want to participate, um, like I said, it's not going to be a live show. It's going to be a Zoom meeting with official SWL channel members that want to join in. So hopefully this is going to work out by the end of the month. So, uh, hey, everybody. Welcome aboard. This is the Shortwave Radio Show. We are here twice a week. We are here on Wednesday at uh, 
zero hours UTC. Now, the change. Tonight in North America, we are going to go forward one hour with our clocks. It's a time of the year we change for daylight savings time. That means that starting next week, the show will be UTC the same. So if you are basing your, um, you know, getting here in UTC time, no problem. You're going to be okay because it's always the same. But if you're basing the fact that you come here with your local time, we're going to be an hour later because of the time change. That means starting next week, we're back at 8 p.m. Eastern, zero hours universal time for D live show. And next Saturday, we're going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern for the 20-hour UTC show. So in local time, we're shifting one hour because of the time change. In UTC time, it's the same. UTC never changes. So just a word of warning. If you come here Wednesday or next Saturday and you're like, "What's nothing's happening. Well, maybe it's because you're an hour early. Uh, that that might be the problem. So remember, the time change will change the uh, reference to your local time in North America. In Europe, you guys are changing only at the end of the month. So for you guys, there's no change yet. Uh, for you guys, the change is going to come at the end of the month. So uh, this is going to be uh, really cool um, to, to, to continue. And of course, uh, we're going to have the big change at the end of the month also with the changes of schedule for shortwave that's coming up. So I uh, hope that you enjoyed the show today. My name is Gilles. I'm located in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, northeast part of North America. And we are here to entertain, talk about radio. We've got a fantastic chat room with a wonderful people that are helpful, uh, you know, really nice guys that just want to help out. If you're new to the hobby, I think it's the best place in the world. If you're an old radio guy from 50 years ago, you're still at the best place in the world. This is where everything needs to happen and will be. So um, you're at the right place wherever, whatever, whatever. Um, this is going to, um, you know, uh, this is the best place to be for everyone. Once the party's over, there's a Facebook group, official SWL channel Facebook group, where you can actually also continue to party. Lots of sharing, lots of people asking questions, sharing what they're listening to, uh, new radios they buy, and everything that, um, you know, they're doing with their radios. It's a very active group, lots of fun. I'm active there when I listen to the radio also. And we just have a lot of fun sharing, of course, in general. So hope you guys enjoy the uh, the live shows, enjoy the Facebook group, uh, the chat room, and um, and have fun with your radios. It's, it's a cool thing to do. So uh, nice to have everybody here. Let's jump into the chat room, and then we're going to talk about uh, in more details, and I'll share the link to the... Uh, to uh, the event coming up later this month. Uh, Wendell Daniels, <clears throat> nice to have you on board from the island of Bermuda. Welcome aboard. David, KJ4CMY, nice to have you here from Central Georgia. We have Gary24Fan, nice to have you on board and talking about Elizabeth. I haven't checked the email. Where's the... Let me just check it out here. Trying to find... I'll use the phone. I'll check with the phone. Oh, the tab is there. I'll check with the phone anyways. So welcome aboard, everyone. And uh, let's just uh, make sure that we know who's there or not. Uh, here, here, Richard Lemke saying hello. And says, uh, great news from our radio, Austria International. They are QS selling. So this is cool. This is cool. And they have, of course, extended their programs on shortwave. Uh, so they're QS selling again. This is pretty cool. And uh, we have Elizabeth saying hello uh, from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And uh, this is really nice. Um, we uh, welcome you aboard. 
Uh, John Glass saying, hey, and uh, actually has a question. I'll keep that open here so I don't forget it. We're going to answer that question in not very long uh, about the uh, international broadcast being frequencies. Uh, so he says uh, that he's a blind ham and living in Northern California. He listens to the show regularly and really enjoy them. Can you run down the list of international shortwave bands and their lower and upper frequencies? So uh, that would be very helpful. So we're going to do that, and we're going to talk about that today. So hope everybody is enjoying the show today. Um, nice to have you on board. So, uh, okay, uh, international broadcast bands coming up in a few minutes. I'm just going to run down the chat, and we're going to talk about all of this. Uh, Gary, 24 fan, nice to have you on board. And from a snowy northern Maine, we had um, we were supposed to have like a foot of snow, but I think it is not really much more than two or two to three inches is pretty much what we got. It's white, but uh, we got two to three inches roughly uh, here. Dwayne, nice to have you on board from a cold 22 degrees northeast Tennessee. Rob, nice to have you on board from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, David KJ4 Sam Wine is a chilly and windy Georgia, five degrees Celsius. Ouch, that's cold. Uh, Jeff Williams, nice to have you here. Jeff from uh, Cornwall, UK. Jeff King, nice to have you here from Jacksonville, Florida. Under a freeze warning, uh, we have, um, as we go down, let's, let's go down, let's go down, let's go down. And uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? Um, just going down here. Okay. Uh, we have Dwayne. So nice to have you here. Bobby Burgess, nice to have you here. Robert Cross, nice to have you on board. Um, we have TFP, Taloa Fishing. Nice to have you on board. Uh, K5ASL, nice to have you here. Um, we have Matt, MDK2, nice to have you on board from Denver, Colorado. David in Barcelona, Spain, nice to have you here. And try and making contact with a, uh, with someone close to you uh, today on 20 meters, but you didn't seem to hear me. Uh, Lou, EA3JE in uh, Barcelona was making contacts. Unfortunately, I never got to uh, to go there. His signal was pretty good, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to give it a shot, but it didn't happen. Nice to have you here, David, from Barcelona. Como esta mi amigo? Andrew Simpson, nice to have you here from England. Um, what else do we have? Robert Cross, been out all night listening to shortwave. He's tired. Marvin Motz, nice to have you here from Asia. Um, VA3, VE3FAL1, Fred, nice to have you here. DJW883, nice to have you here from Pennsylvania. Sheldon Harvey, nice to have you on board from Greenfield Park, Quebec. Artisan Crafters Kitchen, nice to have you here from Massachusetts. Been uh, listening to the radio, building another rocket and plan to paint Ukrainian colors. Cool. Uh, John, nice to have you here. WPE4KNC, nice to have you on board from uh, Virginia. Chris66 from Kentucky. We have uh, Art, nice to have you here from uh, New Jersey, K2ADC. Jetcrafter, nice to have you here from Southern Maine. We have Nick Sharp from Southern England. We have, uh, and we have, we have, I'm <laughs> trying to not to repeat. Too many times the same people. Steve, 2E0WZL, nice to have you here. Kevin, nice to have you on board. Christian Marcoux, the North Bay on Ontario. Hope you are going well, my friend. PLF Radio, bonjour et bienvenue. J'espère que ça va bien. À Lyon, en France. Ici, ça va bien. On a eu un peu de neige, mais tout va bien. Laura Robertson, nice to have you here. From Italy, I3 slash KO4 DFJ. Chuck, nice to have you here from Pennsylvania. And yes, a update is available. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> what do we have? Laura just purchased a St. Jean 909X2. Mark Schmidt, nice to have you here from Maine. Glenn, nice to have you here. KB9IN. We have Eric Cottrell. Bonjour, hi. Nice to have you on board. And uh, from a damp Boston. John Beckham, nice to have you here from Northeast Florida. RJDA Dakota, WA0113SWL. Nice to have you here. Jim's Rager Check, nice to have you here. Carl Icon from New York. Brian Penny from Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Gabrielle waving from Uruguay. Nice to have you here, my friend. Uh, John says his new 909X2 arrived yesterday. Cool. You'll be able to follow on today with some tuning demands with it. And maybe learn a thing or two about how to use it if you uh, have a few questions on it. Um, uh, what else do we have? Tom DeXter, WP2QED from Hudson Valley, New York. Nice to have you here. We have Mad Radio DXer from the UK. What happened Wednesday? Well, the internet just dropped my modem. Uh, I, I first I was wondering what was happening, but modem, uh, all the the lights on the modem stopped and just one blinking, the one trying to sync. So the internet actually dropped. David McCormick, nice to have you here. Uh, hopefully things are going to be okay today. Chuck, nice to have you on board from South Texas, and we have. We have anybody else? Uh, let me just go down here. So Fred Waterer, nice to have you here. Salutation. Nice to have you on board, my friends. Uh, Neil Rigby from Nottingham, UK. Nice to have you here. We have Zero uh, Hundred. Nice to have you on board. KD2ANN from New Jersey. We have Jay Watterson, 69. Nice to have you here. Greg. Nice to have you on board. Friday at uh, 12 a.m., listen to the BBC, 41 meter band, 7285. Cool. Everybody's saying hello to Elizabeth. Uh, we have WF7I Homebrew. Nice to have you here, Bert. And uh, from cold and rural Virginia, going through old memorabilia in the basement, found 1980s copy of ARL Tune In the World Study Guide for Novice. And license. Wow. Pretty crazy. Robert Cross, C1 changes begin at the end of the month. Will Wednesday and Saturday nights be still same tuning around the bands on shortwave still? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're going to have fun doing that. Uh, Trustin, nice to have you here from Newfoundland. Uh, we have uh, VE3FAL1. Fred says, my first shortwave radio where the Radio Shack uh, P box kit and glow patrol that I built as a young boy and still have both radios. This is cool. Yeah, Fred, that is my firewall. That's what's keeping me uh, safe on the internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> got my, uh, my visible firewall. Uh, Zen Pharaohs following along with the FRG7, Air Spy HF Plus, and some antennas. Small bowlers too with cocktail later. Cool. Dave, nice to have you here from the Bronx. Matthew, nice to have you on board from East Tennessee. KO4TMQ, nice to have you back. We have, we have VA3JPX in Ottawa, Ontario. Nice to have you on board. Uh, yes, I do have my, I have an NFED, uh, wire, um, uh, in the backyard. So I've been, actually, it's interesting because, um, so the, the NFED, uh, David is really temporary because it was the quick setup of the winter. So I set it up very quickly in the winter. It's a, actually a gift from one of the fans that follows me that said, I got an NFED antenna with a nine to one and balance and balance. Uh, so, uh, you know, I worked the world with this. Um, I think you would be happy to have it. So I put it outside. And uh, what I did is uh, the uh, box that has the connectors and everything does not, it's not a shielded box for the outside. So what I did, I actually shielded 
uh, with some, um, um, I, I've got some um, kind of silicone pon compound. So I kind of sealed it myself in the best way I could to make sure that it could actually withstand being outside for a while because uh, I didn't want to have to take it down every time I just stopped transmitting. Uh, until now, you know, I've, I've went up to the West Coast. I talked to California. I talked to Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. So I cover pretty much, I covered North America and in many ways and uh, had some contacts. If I take more time, I'd have more contacts. Um, I'm still waiting for my first European contact. Um, it's funny because it's as if I have the impression that my pattern of transmission seems to favor to the west and the south of me, but not really to the east. So anyways, I'll keep trying. And anyways, when the snow is all melted, I'll have something else put up uh, in the backyard. But for now, temporary setup, it works. You know, I've got uh, about 10 to 12 contacts in the logbook now. So it's kind of fun. Uh, what else do we have? What else do we have? What else do we have? Uh, Mika Delmage, nice to have you here from Shoreward Park, Alberta, Canada. We have Anders Baldinder, nice to have you here from Sweden. Uh, John, got the SPL990X from Nonco last Monday, really ready to rock. Cool. John Beckham, sorry about uh, you lost power apparently. No, I didn't lose power. I just lost the internet. The power was there. It's just the internet. Augustin Bernard, nice to have you on board from Edmonton, Alberta. Um, yeah, no, just the internet. That's why I came back with uh, with the smartphone um, and, and told a couple of people, can you tell everybody that uh, my internet's gone? Um what else do we have? Our JDA Dakota have a new internet provider. As just a couple of weeks ago, I now use Gateway Fiber rather than Spectrum Charter. Yeah, I've been on the same. Uh, you know, I don't plan to change because uh, Video Tone is pretty rock solid here, and I've got really good connectivity with them. So it's expensive, but it works. Tosin Loaf, nice to have you here from Snowy North Alabama. RJ Dakota laughing at my firewall. <laughs> yeah, Jason V9JMC. That's the firewall that keeps the Russians hackers out of my, uh, my stuff. <laughs> Stephen Wood, nice to have you here from Cape Cod. Uh, Terry Cook from Western Montana, KF7BQ. Uh, we have... Uh, we have... Uh, could add a few logs to the uh, fire. <laughs> um... Larry Gilmore, nice to have you on board, my friend. Uh, Xisku Ignacio, nice to have you here from Barcelona. Gabriel, are you sure your internet crash wasn't the revenge of the knocking lady? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I mean, um, what else do we have? Matthew, KO4TMQ. Um Laura Robertson, yeah, well, I'm not on CW yet. I'm voice, so to be on CW, I'm going to have to brush up. But my call is uh, Victor Echo 2, Zulu, Zulu, India. Landing a new firmware for the ATS-25, 3.4, more curlful screen and seek up-down feature. Uh, yeah, I've seen also, um, I don't know which one it is. There's Was it a Russian guy? or I saw one that actually adds a Spectrum that you can see the waterfall on the ATS-25. So I'm going to check that out because I plan on, you know, when I find the, the one that I want, I will update the firmware of the ATS-25. Um, uh, Stephen, what special event station W5B is on the air on 15, on 14 to 40, celebrating 100th anniversary of WSB, Atlanta, Georgia. Let's try it out. 14240. And see if we hear anything. Let's put some volume here. Hello. 
No, I've got Lou. I've got Lou. There you go. I've got Lou from Barcelona on four, 14 to 40 here. Echo America 3, Japan Echo. He's been there for many hours. That's 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 who I'm hearing. Um, what else do we have? So RGA Dakota, new provider is more reliable. Cool. That's what you want. Michael, nice to have you here, Mike, from uh, northern New Jersey with the Ethon 750. And, uh, yep. So uh, this is going to be, um, it's uh, the one I have is about, I don't, I don't know the exact length. Uh, I'd say it's about um, four, close to 50 feet. It um, it uh, is capable of 40 meters through 6 meters. In my experiment, I get the best on 20, 40, and I actually get, it doesn't say 80, but I actually get 80 quite well. So, and I get the work bands not too bad. Uh, 15 is not as good. Um, I see that my SWR is higher. And 10 meters is not that great either so um it, it depends probably on the way i set it up also it's more of as a sloper right now and i'm using the internal tuner of the eight the yesu um uh ft450 but um 20 and 40 i i kick i kick butt the signal the signal gets there i'm powerful and, and i pretty much get almost all the stations that i i contact uh what else do we have? Let's see. Oh, yeah, VA3JPX. That guy from Barcelona, the EA3JEs, we hear him all the time. He, he, he makes the, he, this signal is amazing. Uh, John Beckham, ham activity in 14 to 40. Uh, Zen Faros, 14 to 40, big signal. Robert Cross uh, can hear him as well. So it's pretty cool. So we're hearing Barcelona, Spain here when 14 to 40. Uh, Shelly, bunch of snow, uh, South Central Pennsylvania. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, David Vasquez from Los Angeles, California. Uh, we have uh, Tom DeXter is using his new cross country wireless LAA broadband loop. Interesting. No problem, Matt. See you later. Uh, David, currently stuck on the two intermediate supports so the wire turns around to make it around the KTH. So, uh, but they flex too much, so I'm planning to also install 212 meter metallic mass in parallel. Cool. John Beckham has WWV and then 25 megahertz on in Northeast Florida. Mike Leon, first time viewer. The good news, I'm using an ICOM ICR75 with MLA30. Bad news, it's inside of an apartment. Good radio, good antenna, bad noise. So, uh, yeah, that is the problem of being in apartments, in condos. That is terrible, terrible on, uh, on in many ways. TFP Taloha Fishing can hear on 14 to 40 on the Ethan Elite. Inside the office at work. This is cool. This is cool. Uh, Mad Reader DX. Yeah, yeah, that guy has the uh, go see uh, is go see his QRZ.com webpage. Um, EA3GE, Echo Alpha 3 Japan Echo. You'll see the amazing, amazing. He's got, you know, it's it's like he's as powerful as Radio Exterior de España. <laughs> Uh, Elizabeth from Anchorage, nice to have you on board and just had a good quake, apparently. Oh, ho. Uh, not too bad, I hope. 
Uh, David copying a 3JE locally here in Barcelona on his Icom ICR-D500 modified MLE30 loop with S9 signal. Cool. I tried to contact him a little earlier, but it didn't work. But Because um, I thought if someone's going to hear me in Europe, he's going to hear me. <laughs> but I didn't seem to make it. So anyways, we'll, we'll try another time. You know, It's the fun of ham radio. And of course, as I set up new antennas and stuff, it's going to be interesting. Okay, now I've reached I've I've reached the bottom of the chat, and I have a little something to announce for uh, the upcoming month. Next, so at the end of this month, uh, Sunday, March the twenty seventh, we will have a special official SWL Zoom meeting. So what that means is that it's not a live show; it's a meeting with anybody that is in the channel here in the live shows and so on wants to meet up and say hi. And um, this is in partnership with the Canadian International DX Club, thanks to Sheldon Harvey. We'll be using the club's CIDX Zoom. And we hope to see you. I hope to see you guys. Um, you can be there either with camera or and in, in, in sound, which would be cool because I would see who you are for the first time you know, for some of you. Um, also, it would be fun, even if you don't have a camera, you can just talk to us or you can just be a participant and watch everybody interact. It's going to happen on um, March the 27th. Um, it's going to be at 19 hours universal time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern daylight time. And you will um, need to register in advance to actually get here. So 19 hours universal time. The uh, Zoom, so to register in advance, um, you will actually need to register. Um, let me find a tiny URL that I'm trying to find here. I got the big URL. Uh, here we go. So, yep. Okay, everything working here. For some reason, I have the big URL, which still works. Anyways, I'm going to give it a big one here. I think it's going to work anyways uh, for the chat room. So uh, here's the here's the place to register, guys. If you want to join us, you have to register in advance. You'll receive an email with a passcode that um, it's only for the official SWL channel people. So if you want to join in. And uh, I think it could going to be a lot of fun meeting you guys in a Zoom meeting. So register in advance on this little place. So this is where you got to go and register for the Zoom meeting that's coming up Sunday, March the 27th. Uh, 2022 at 3 p.m. Eastern, 1900 hours universal time. And we're going to hopefully, hopefully see some of you and have some of you participate. So uh, click the link, uh, enter your name, your email. Uh, you'll be getting the all the instructions to get into the uh, Zoom meeting at the end of the month and hope to see you there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I want to thank Sheldon Arvey and the Canadian International DS Club uh, for the possibility. This is not going to be a monthly event. This is a one in one unique event for now. Eventually, we'll probably have some more. But for now, this is what we have. And uh, once again, thanks to uh, Sheldon Harvey and the Canadian International DS Club. I hope to see you guys there. It would be fun. We're going to have a chat, interact together. Learn a little more, a little bit more about who you are, as we'll be, you know, more in a discussion, one on one, and uh, just uh, I think it's going to be a cool thing uh, to uh, to uh, check out. So uh, don't forget to go to the link that I shared. Um, enter your name, an email, register in advance, and um, hope to see you there on March twenty seventh, which is a Sunday at three p.m. Eastern, nineteen hours Universal Time. Okay, uh, Klaus, nice to have you here. We have Meta Lunar Interference, always ruined the listening experience here, buzzing like a motorboat, and uh, 
motorcycle running across the entire shortwave bands, even outside. I'm close to AM tower, maybe the cause. If you are close to a AM tower for a radio station, your entire devices could be overwhelmed by the power of the radio waves coming from that tower. And that will create all sorts of weird things on your radios from buzzing, from, um, you know, all sorts of noise. Your The amplifiers, the RF amps inside your radios might just be overwhelmed by the amount of signal that it's getting. So it is absolutely possible because you're close to an AM uh, blowtorch that, that the problem is in part could be that, yes. Absolutely. Uh, that is a problem. You know, it doesn't need that much of a powerful station to actually feel it. The uh, Montreal Aeacian station that was on 1610 kilohertz when they started were broadcasting from about two kilometers from me. Not even. It was, um, you know, I, I'm trying to, to figure out how many, um, how, how far that is from me. Um, I don't think it's more, it's less than two kilometers away. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. And that they didn't have that much power. They had, you know, one kilowatt, a thousand watts, and they had a loop antenna on top of the building where, where I would go to, uh, get my, uh, Asian food, the Asian market here. They were on top of that building. And it's just a thousand watts, and it is about two kilometers away. But um, I could feel it; it was overloading some of my radios. And yet, you know, I wasn't next door; I was still a little further away. And so, imagine if you live next to a fifty kilowatt blowtorch. I mean, uh, it must be very difficult. Very difficult. Uh, Jason V9 JMC 5.1 Quake 41 kilometers north west northwest of uh, Nikiski, Alaska. So a little uh, earthquake over there. Five. Not uh, that that that's gonna shake you uh, a little, uh, for sure. Um, what else do we have? So Kevin, nice to have you here. W2S uh, WS2H from New Jersey. And uh, a bill from WRMI emailed me that a QSL from Memphis Radio was en route uh, to me. They were worried no one was listening. Cool. Cool. Elizabeth, nothing fancy. I have 60 feet of speaker wire acting as a long wire. Works great. Yeah, if you have, if you don't have that much noise around you, that works amazingly well. It's a great antenna. Others other crafters registered. Cool, cool, and I hope uh, many of you will. Esteban, nice to have you here from uh, the Canary Islands. E E A eight D L D L J. Nice to have you on board. Um, Long waves thirty fifty. Have you heard the Starlin hackers transmission? Uh, no, I've not. Uh, Mark, nice to have you on board from Southeast Wisconsin. WSMI Obrew, Jill, the Zoom looks great. I also registered. Cool. Robert Cross, the Zoom accept non-licensed uh, radio amateur as well. It's not an amateur radio thing. It's a radio thing. So just go, click the link, enter your name, an email, and you will have a passcode that you can use to get in. And uh, it's uh, going to be a great, great thing. Uh, everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a ham radio operator. As long as you're a fan of the official SWL channel, as long as you're a, uh, you know, a fan of radio uh, and, and follow what I do, everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a ham radio operator. Uh, you just have to be a radio listener. Um, and, and I hope that uh, people are going to be here. So uh, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that could be something that you can try, like Zen Farrow says, a medium wave blocking filter. So Sheldon, watching the registering going on, and he says that uh, the uh, he's already uh, we already have twenty registered. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
Um, nice to nice to have everybody come in. Uh, Chris Powell, nice to have you here from Minneapolis AE Zero IY. Um, hello there, Mister. Uh, I don't know your name with those letters. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, what else? What else? Joel Bundy, nice to have you here, Joel, uh, from Savannah, Georgia. Pretty cool. Mark Dragger, my Texan H501X is easily overloaded by 6.20 a.m. in nearby Milwaukee. I have to listen on normal, not DX, connected to 100 feet of wire. Uh, typical, it's normal. It's to totally normal, Mark. Uh, portable radios are, are all on that. They all have that. Uh, it's not a flaw, but that it by design because they're not, you know, like IN receivers with tons of electronics to help with that. Uh, most of the portable receivers will overload in some way with some stations. Um, it's it's normal, uh, Mark. John, I want to build my antenna exterior. Does it need to be dual wire? Single wire is okay. And what size of the wire should I use? I plan for 100 feet. So single wire. It doesn't have to be dual wires. Just single wire is fine. Uh, and any size of wire will do as long as it's just sturdy enough to hold up, especially 100 feet. Uh, remember, it's going to be windy. It's going to have rain and uh, all sorts of things. So just make sure that it's, you know, Big enough to withheld withheld the, uh, the the pressure of being pushed by the wind and everything, but for the rest, um, any size of wire it doesn't matter. Size doesn't matter, and uh, single wires uh, is fine. So Donald E. Smith from Bermuda, uh, Elizabeth, who is that person just south of me that just got rattled by an earthquake? Um, hmm. So apparently it's Nikita. Radio Storm, uh, K5, JLH. Nice to have you here from uh, Oklahoma City. Cool to have you on board. Yeah, it's totally normal. Radios, you know, radios overload. I mean, ra these radios are sensitive. You got to remember one thing is that these radios are very sensitive. There is a threshold where they'll overload. Uh, absolutely. Um, I was listening... I think it's on the 990X. I was listening to something this week, and uh, I actually had some overload from WWCR that I could hear over Radio Havana, Cuba, and I actually had to put the DX switch to the normal position for it to be okay. Even the uh, St. G and ATS 909X2 that I've got here right now, um, I noticed that from time to time I got to bring the RF gain back down uh, on some frequency ranges where there's a lot of very strong shortwave signals. So, um, Carlos Rubens, nice to have you here from Poland. M1 MBZ, nice to have you on board. 500 meters from the local BBC transmitter, but it went off the air in 2016. Until then, my SDR receivers were overloaded and basically unusable at home. So, you know. Two broke Tim, should you use a tuner with a wire antenna? Um, it's not required for reception. There could be some advantage in using one, uh, a manual tuner for maximizing the, the amount of signal that you get. But for the most part, on, on a wire antenna, it doesn't matter on receive much. It, you want one on transmit, but on receive, it doesn't matter that much. Um, you might gain a little bit of signal by matching, for sure, but it's it's not something that is required. Over all the years that I had my wire antennas, I never had a tuner and, and worked great. But on receive, it's not it's not needed uh, overall. Okay, uh, answering the question of our friend here uh, through email. So we have our friend that has. Um, that has um, um let me just check it out here so we have our friend here that asked us about the uh the uh let me just check something here 
Okay, whatever that is. Somebody called me. Who calls people today? Everybody texts me or messages me. Uh, who calls? Um, okay. Um, so our friend here, uh, John Glass, wants to have the uh, different international broadcast bands. Uh, what are the, the top and bottom frequencies? And I thought um, while I was reading it uh, that I also would give like the uh, the properties, the properties of these bands, um, a little bit kind of, you know, when should you, um, when should you use them daytime, nighttime? So international broadcast bands. Um, there's also something that you got to remember is that between the official bands, and the um, the um, the reality of who's there, <laughs> um, and and what frequency to use, there is a difference. So the different bands uh, with meter band and all. So you got the 120 meter band, that goes from 2300 to 2500 kilohertz. Let's put it in there, 2300 to 2500. Not much in use today. Um, I know one station in Australia I've seen recently that uses it. There's not much there. You can still tune around. It's a tough band. I personally, in 40 years of listening, never heard a station in that band. Ever, ever, ever. Um, a lot of the stations that were there were in, like in Australia or somewhere like, you know, kind of in the tropical areas also. But, you know, tune around. You never know. Uh, it's mostly nighttime and low frequency that it is. Then you've got the 90 meter um, broadcast band, 3200 to 3400 kilohertz, 3200, 3400. Go down a little bit. I would actually put it at 3100 to 3400 because there are stations a little bit outside sometimes in that range. Uh, 90 meter band has some stations. You can tune around here in North America. W WCR uses it. WWRB, I think, uses it also. Uh, there's a couple of stations that use the 3 megahertz range. Um, I haven't heard something far away in a long time. Um, I used to hear a couple of Central South American stations there. There are still some Central South American stations registered there. So tune around. You never know what you're going to get. Mostly a nighttime frequency range once again. So uh, that's one to check out. 75 meters, which is European and pretty much European um, uh, stations. So uh, basically, um, 3900 to 4000. We get some stations here in North America from time to time. I, I do get, uh, like the other day, I, I got the KBS World Radio off of, uh, uh, I believe it was a Werferton UK transmitter, uh, 3955. Uh, so there's a few stations that I get from time to time there. Um, it is mostly a European band in broadcasting. Uh, it's technically in the top part of the 80-meter band for North America, for example. It's not used in the Americas. Uh, it really seems to be mostly IARU1, which is Europe region for that. Um, so check it out. Uh, nighttime also. 60 meters, 4750 to 4995. So... Let's put the 5,000 kilohertz. Um, I would start at 4,700 up to 5,000 kilohertz. 60 meters is what we call a tropical band. It is a tropical band. It has its um, own pr properties. Anybody broadcasting on that band cannot broadcast officially to a foreign audience. Uh, the, it's, uh, the tropical bands have rules, and broadcasters like for example, two broadcasters that use three broadcasters, uh, U.S. broadcasters that use it a lot, WTWW, WBCQ, and WWCR. It's technically for the local audience inside North America. Of course, shortwave being shortwave, it's heard in Europe, it's heard everywhere. But they're meant for local shortwave broadcasting, and it's the rule. So you can't say uh, I'm on 4790 beaming to Europe, you're kind of 
you know, nobody's going to do anything about it, but you're, it's kind of not in the rules of that band. Uh, still <clears throat> quite a lot of stuff, even though it's quiet. <clears throat> sorry, guys. It's quiet compared to the past where a lot of African, Central, and South American stations used it. Um, it's still used. There's still a couple of African stations you can pick up there. There's a few South, Central South Americans you'll get there. Uh, of course, there's a couple, uh, there's a few um, North American stations like WWCR 4840, <clears throat> WBCQ 4790, and uh, WTWW 5085. Uh, there's also the other one of 5050, sometimes that's there. Uh, WRMI <clears throat> also uses uh, 4980, 5010. So be careful not to, so they're in Spanish most of the time. So be careful not to kind of uh, falsely identify them as some exotic stations. Um, you also have, um, um, there's a couple, you know, there's a few Cubans in there. There's Radio Rebelde, 40, uh, 5025, Radio Progresso, 4765, Radio Havana, Cuba, 5040. You've got, um, I hear the Colombian one regularly on 4940, uh, La Montana, Colombia, or it's, it's a different name now on the uh, schedule, but it's still from Colombia. Uh, there's a few relays from Africa that are heard there, like Voice of America, 4930, 4960. Um, check it out. There's some stuff in there to listen to, and uh, you never know what you're going to get. Next band is one of the major international broadcast bands. It's a 49 meters international broadcast band. Uh, 5800 to 6200. 5800 to 6200. That is one of the major international broadcast bands, mostly late afternoon, evening, and night. A lot of stuff in there. Um, one of the major bands to DX and try to get stations, uh, definitely. Uh, one trick is often you've got stations to your east uh, at nighttime or when the sun sets and to the west uh, when the sun rises. But there's a lot of things in there. A lot of broadcasters use it. Most major broadcasters have at least one frequency in there. Uh, it's definitely one of the great bands to listen to. 41 meters, 7200 to 7. I'll put it very large here. I'll put it from 7100 to 7800. And, and the reason why is there's a lot of out-of-band stations. That band technically stops at 7450. But there's a lot of broadcasters that use the upper frequencies above that. Um, so, you know, 7100 to 7800 to make sure you don't miss out on anything. Um, technically you should start at 7200 because that's by rule, uh, that, that band is there. It's a band that's used everywhere else except in North America for broadcasting on the hand band. That's 7200, 7300, but at 7300 and above every station from everywhere in the world can use it. Uh, lots of stuff in there to listen to. Definitely check it out. And even the portion where it's not supposed to be there because of it's the ham bands, uh, 7,100 to 7,200, you'll hear stuff. Uh, I heard what I assume because I couldn't really identify it, but I heard what I assume to be um, Eth Ethiopia on 7,110 the other night. Um, it's last week, I think. 31 meters, 9... Try start at 9200 up to 10,000 kilohertz. A lot of stuff in there. It's a band that is magical throughout the day. Listen at any time of day and night. Usually more, you know, late afternoons, afternoon, late afternoon, and evening. But anytime, anytime, something can pop up and be interesting. And depending on the seasons and all, 9200 to 10,000 kilohertz. One of the major broadcast bands that a lot of stations use. 25 meters, a great band also. 11,500 to 12,200. Uh, once again, I you know, all day, all night, um, all year, try uh, the frequency range. You'll hear stuff in there all the time. And uh, so most major international broadcast bands also want to use that one. 22 meters, 13,570 to 13,870. Uh, pretty good. Band also, lots of stations using it. 
Um, this is one of the new bands that were created back in the, the 80s to accommodate the fact that there were too many stations on shortwave and the crowded bands. It's one of the, it's, it's used quite a lot. Uh, check it out. Lots of stuff in there. 19 meter band, mostly daytime, but uh, you never know. Listen, even at night sometimes, especially in the summer. Uh, 15, 100 to 15, 850. We're going to put it like that. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in there to listen to, uh, daytime mostly, but anytime, uh, come, something can pop up 16 meters. There's a lot, there's a, there's less stuff there, but there's still a lot of stations there. 17, 480 to 17, 900 daytime, mostly with a little bit of nighttime or evening. If, uh, from time to time in the, um, in the, uh, in the summertime. Uh, a lot of broadcasters still use it, but uh, it, it depends on solar activity a lot. If solar activity isn't that great, um, it might not have a lot of stations. So, the, it, you know, check it out from day to day. And uh, when solar activity is there, it, you're going to hear stuff. 13 meters, 21,450 to 21,850. Um, there are broadcasters using it. It's one of the bands very dependent on solar activity. So it will work when solar activity is high. Recently, I've heard a few stations there. Uh, Radio France International on 21690 is one. Uh, there's that station from um, Radio Africa from uh, WRMI that I get almost every day, 21525. Check it out. Um, you, you, you'd be surprised what you can hear from time to time. And finally, there's the 11-meter band, which nobody uses, 25670 to 26100. Uh, used to be... A few broadcasters would be there. Um, you know, I've got a QSL card here from Radio RSA on 25790 from the 80s. It used to be used. It used to be one of those bands that has some stations when the solar activity was high. Uh, today, nobody is using it. Um, Radio France, for some reason, on the HFCC list, had registered one of the 11-meter frequencies, but um, nobody believes they ever used it, so they just registered it. Uh, and so these are the bands to listen to for international broadcasts. And, of course, anything can pop up at any frequency. It's surprising sometimes. So these are the bands. Hope it helps out for those that wonder what the bands are and what you can expect uh, in there for sure. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have? Well, let me just check it out here. Okay, let's uh, go down. Yeah, overloading. Doug Smith, watching in Virginia Beach. Observations on the Dixon 501 were very helpful. I'm having fun with mine so far. Cool. And more coming up. So uh, check out the videos. Uh, Kevin, hearing an English broadcast on 12100 right now. I don't know if I'm hearing anything here. Don't have anything here, but, uh, what are the, if you're hearing something in English, uh, 12100, it's, uh, Radio Taiwan is not broadcasting at this time. So it's either something. Are you sure you're not? Check 12095, just out of curiosity, uh, Kevin. Make sure your filters are not too wide. Could it be 12095 that you're hearing something? Because you could be hearing maybe the BBC on 12095. Although at this time, well, at 21, it would be there. It would shut if, if it stopped at 21 UT. If it stopped at 21 UT, um, maybe you were hearing 12095 to BBC, um, um, Kevin, because at this time, you know, it's not impossible. And I'm not saying you're not hearing something on 1200 because it could be possible that it's not listed, but there's nothing listed on 1200, 12100 right now. So I wonder if 12095 
As Terry Cook says, tuner may work as a pre-selector and reducing overload if you have it. Yeah, that that is one use that could be helpful. Absolutely, uh, that's something that that could defin definitely um, uh, work. Um, <clears throat> what else do we have? Marshall, nice to have you here. Greg, watch on YouTube on studying for your ham license. Um, so pretty cool. And it says uh, the people who give you the test help you study. Um, you have learning disability. Yeah, you got to, you know, you're not alone, Greg, by the way. When I passed my hand license, when I passed, yeah. So, Kevin, you're, on, you're actually, your, your filter was too wide. You're hearing 12095, which was BBC, um, which is a main BBC frequency, uh, Kevin. So um, make sure that you narrow down that filter to make sure you don't hear it too wide on the on the range. Um, so um, when I passed my ham license um, last year, there were a couple of people having a lot of difficulty um, because of different learning disabilities. Uh, one guy had some... Uh, kind of a form of autism and um, had difficulty focusing on on things. Uh, one other guy had uh, kind of a reverse problem. He was the the guy focused too much on very small things that that couldn't make him see the big picture. So we're all you know uh, a lot of people are challenged in in some way. I'm lucky because I'm the guy that easily you know, gets it when you, you show me something or, or, or if I take a lesson, but it's not everybody that's like that. Um, do take the time to, to check out and, and, you know, I think it's a good idea. There must be a lot of videos on YouTube actually for hams that, or people that would be want to have their hand license, but not necessarily um, you know, have difficulty in maybe um, focusing on the on on the learning of all of it. Um, go at your own rhythm and go slowly. And remember, you can take your ham exam as many times as you need. You know, it's not a one thing. If you fail, don't take it as a negative thing. You can you know continue studying, continue looking at all the, the questions and 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 having the answers to them and try from time to time. And I'm sure you'll be able to, at some point, get the, the license, uh, even if you have a hard time. Um, Rob Hawkins, nice to have you here. <clears throat> G5ROB. Call icon, uh, AWR, 15355. Uh, and to New York from Austria. Um, uh, Mindy, I would like to buy my first shortwave radio. I'm brand new to this and would like to learn how now that I'm retired, thanks to a, a newbie. So, okay, cool. Um, do you have a, a specific budget and uh, that you'd like to set for a radio? There's a lot of really neat radios today for you know a, a pretty decent price, uh, honestly. Tom the Yankster heard VLAT, Tenant Creek, 2325 in 1987 uh, in Australia at the time. Yeah, that helped. That helped tremendously. <laughs> uh, Sunwave, I found out if long wire is working right, you can hold it really close to the telescopic whip without touching the wire to the telescopic uh, and it will receive. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, it, what it does is actually it's a, a coupling effect. I actually use that effect regularly, especially on radios. If you uh, that that's a trick that I use that a lot of people can use. If you have a long wire, but the long wire overloads your radio constantly, what you could do is instead of contacting directly, if the wire is plugged into the antenna socket or if you clip it to the telescopic, instead of making direct physical contact, just take the wire and uh, do a few turns with the wire still insulated around the telescopic. You're going to have a coupling effect 
And the signal is not going to be as strong, but it's going to be stronger than just using a telescopic. And often it prevents the overload, but still gives you enough uh, to um, just, um, you know, get more signal uh, on your radios. Yeah, Radio Club de Para from Brazil on 4885. Absolutely. Uh, Sheldon Harvey, as he says, first ever official shortwave SWL channel Zoom meeting, March 27, 19 UTC. Must register, and uh, you'll have a confirmation email. But this is going to be pretty cool, and hope everybody's going to enjoy participating to this and uh, having fun meeting all of you. Siddhartha Gosh, uh, just discovered channel, newbie to shortwave radio. Jackson, can you tell me your top three picks for shortwave radios in 21, 2021, 2022? Um, I'll go on price versus performance, depending on what how much money you have to spend. Um, from the low end, um, Radi Wow or CU Wadon R108 to the uh, XH data, also known as the CU Wadon D808, the Texan PL330. Um, these are great little portable receivers and uh, are roughly in the below 100 range US dollars. Um, then depending on what you want to have, um, there are higher end radios that you can, of course, get out there. And then you get into, um, you know, there, there could be a Texan PL 990X. It could be, um, H Texan H501X. It could be a San Gian ATS 909X2. Uh, these radios have the advantages of not muting when you tune a in between. That is a decent price. Texan PL 660, 680 could be fun because it doesn't mute. Decently priced, decent performance. Um, the 660, 680 has the airband. Like the x Data, the 808 has the airband. Radiwell R108 also. Uh, Texan in general does not have airband on many models. So like the Texan PL 330. But you have single sideband. So it depends on the price I want to pay. But the, all the radios that I mentioned here, whatever you choose in there, except the R108 that does not have single sideband, uh, the others that I mentioned, the D808 from XH Data or CU with on, the Texan PL330, uh, three, Texan PL660, 680, 990X. Um, the St. Gian ATS 909X2, they all have single sideband, which adds another world. That's much more that you can listen to. <clears throat> yeah, Sunwave. Absolutely. Tonight is the uh <coughs> tonight is the uh we, we we push our clocks ahead. Jim Gordon, remember when his 49 meter band used to be called the Europe Europa band? Um not here. Dark Noise and L, nice to have you here from Netherlands. PD3MIK is in standby. Nice to have you here, my friend. <coughs> cool, people are registering. Sheldon Harvey says, we, yes, we realized it is late for overseas stations. If this one works well, we may possibly do another one at some time more suitable for international stations but uh it is an experiment for the channel as uh, sheldon says i think it's going to be interesting to see and uh we'll try to do our best to you know it's 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 difficult to accommodate um everybody um on on something like this definitely but um you know i think 19 ut um you know it's still reasonable even though, yes, it's late uh, for a lot of people. Aviation EK, nice to have you here. Says, uh, have an R108 and a Baofeng UV5R. 
Uh, what things do you recommend I do? Play around with them, and 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 um, you know, if you don't hear anything, go to a park, go outside somewhere, take a walk, and you will be surprised at what you can get actually. So, um, yep, yes, I just noticed we're above two hundred today, which is pretty nice. Much uh, we have a, a bigger audience today than we uh, we've had in the past few weeks, which we hover around 150, 160, 170. Is pretty much always the the, the numbers, but uh, nice to see that two above two hundred today, which is really nice. Um, what else do we have? Um, Mike Jam, I was recommended to add a nine one ballon my long wire, which is which I did. Is it really needed? What a ballon does is balance that wire so that it matches the input of a radio. Technically, it should technically give you more signal. In some cases, some people have noted that there could there were less noise for them. Is it absolutely needed? No. You can just plug it into most radios and the mismatch on receive isn't bad enough most of the time to not work. Uh, but it technically it matches your receiver um, impedance with the wire because the wire is a very high impedance. Uh, most radios, big radios, have 50 ohms. The nine to one, what it does, it will match it. Will match it to the 50 ohms. Uh, but you know, for a portable radio, for example, that's not much of a, doesn't change much. It doesn't really, you know, it it might help. Definitely, but it's not something you have to have. Absolutely. Uh, TBDX, sir. Salut, ça va bien? J'espère que tu vas bien, toi aussi. Nice to have you here. JJH, nice to have you here from sunny shores of Lake Michigan. So, uh, yeah, the uh, internet dropped on me uh, on Wednesday. That's why uh, we went dark. We went dark. Uh, dark Noise contacted a station in Kentucky on CB band, lower sideband. So pretty cool, pretty cool with 60 watts. Not bad, not bad. Uh, yeah, 5875 in Europe is active here in North America. Here in Montreal, it's still early for that. I'm going to try it still, but I don't think it's going to make much of a... Oh, it's there. It's there, just enough. I'm just going to... So this is what I have right now. It's not super strong, but it's there. It's the BBC World Service. So it is, it is making it uh, on the east, at least uh, a little bit. Fred Water, YouTube is often an amazing resource. Oh, absolutely, uh, lots of stuff in there, and lots of people that want to help out that make videos, which is also very cool. Uh, Dave says Radio New Zealand was coming in loud and clear for over three hours on 15720 last night. Pretty cool. Uh, Robert Cross picking up 11175 lower on lower sideband. Interesting. Dr. Sisop, nice to have you on board. What else do we have? Carl Icon 8992. Kevin was listening on my S2000. That's one drawback, limited filtering. Yeah, that, you, that we have to be careful with. Some receivers have too wide of bandwidths, and that is something we have to be careful because um, you got to pinpoint, make sure that you're on the correct frequency when you're listening because you can easily listen to a station five kilohertz off. And think you're listening to something there, but in reality, you're listening to the other frequency. Um, it is one thing, if I remember well on the S2000, it is one thing that I had read as a negative side to that radio. The bandwidths were a little large. So, um, Chris Bell, hearing 11.175 USB, good in Minneapolis, but there's an echo in the transmission. Yeah, the echo is because every frequency you're listening to there from the U.S. Global Command has 
multiple locations transmitting the same thing at the same time. So you might be actually hearing multiple stations at the same time. That creates an echo. Barry, do not be sorry to be late. At least you're here. Daniel, nice to have you here. KC1MRZ from New Hampshire. Weather is miserable. But you know what? You got radio. Uh, people happy that we're above 200 people watching. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of tuning uh, if you guys uh, feel like it uh, in a couple of minutes. It's going to go down. Richard Califano, nice to have you here. Uh, Ray Erding, nice to have you on board from the UK. Um, mm, 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 mm. <clears throat> There's Skip on 27555, says Dr. Sisop. 32 people registered already. Keep going, everyone. Cool. Remember, we're going to have on March 27th a official SWL channel Zoom meeting. Uh, I want to meet you guys. I want to see who you are, what you look like. And if you don't want to see, if you don't want to be uh, the guy with the camera, you can still talk to us. It doesn't have, you don't have to have a camera. But uh, it's going to be great to have uh, an interaction with you guys via Zoom. Uh, remember that you have to register. Uh, and I hope that a lot of people join in for that uh, Zoom meeting at the end of the month. Uh, Sunday, March 27th at 19 UTC. That's 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Rachel says, this live stream was in YouTube recommended video. I click on the stream and like it and just subscribe. Thank you so much. Now, that's YouTube giving good recommendations. <laughs> Am I bragging a little bit here? <laughs> Marshall, uh, 5875 BBC, great signal in, in Maryland, S6. Mr. X, nice to have you on board. Says, love your show. Uh, all the best from the UK. Nice to have you on board, my friend. Jim Gordon. Uh, says, after watching the stream for quite a while, I bought a PL880. It's as good as the later Texans with uh, DSP radios. We have reached a plateau concerning design performance and value-wise. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and sensitivity, um, the radios that are well-designed around that DSP chip, they've all reached a, a, a maximum. They've all reached a level that they all perform equally well. So, uh, John Beckham, 5875, negligible in Northeast Florida. Uh, Matt, I'll go on camera. Everyone better be prepared for that, <laughs> says Matt. Hey, it can't be worse than me. I'm here three hours. I'm amazed that people can stand watching my face for three hours and four hours at a time. Uh, John Hummel, Newell, V5JHN, nice to have you here. Enjoying a vodka cranberry. Oh, oh cheers. Here we go. Sunwave tuned my wire for 14 megahertz, which is 16 feet and some inches at a quarter wavelength. Coupling effect we talked about is about uh, as at the 20 meter band, but still uh, will have a couple effect. Uh, so I'll just share it again as I'm pretty much down. XFM, greetings. Nice to have you on board, my friend. Pot problem, TVDX, Germany, on the en retard, au moins tu es là. Bod123, nice to have you on board. Um, so we are down. So, okay, once again, uh, just, just, um, isn't one of the stages, yeah, the 880, isn't one of the stages a DSP? Like the 990X, I think it is. It's the 990X is a DSP set. It's just that it is the DSP is used in only one of the the layers of the radio. The tuning is still phase lock loop PLL analog, but one of the um, the conversions, one of the layers and the conversions, I believe, has the DSP chip in it. Um, the 990X I know for sure is, uh, on an 880, I'm not sure if they had it that or not. Um, but I thought the 880 was like that also. Uh, it's like the, 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 cause if you look at the 990X, they'll, they advertise it as a PLL radio, but it has one of the layers of the radio has, does it have multiple bandwidths? Does the 880 give you five bandwidths, six bandwidths? It's, that's going to answer the question. If you have multiple bandwidths, you have a DSP stage in it. 
It's just that it's not the main driver of the radio. That's why it doesn't mute. It's the PLL that actually drives the radio. The, that, that layer of the conversions. Because the, the 990 and the H501X are both um, triple conversion receivers. One of the, the layers of that triple conversion has that DSP chip in it. That's why you've got the multiple bandwidths. That's the DSP chip working. But it's just that in the end, it's the PLL tuning that is driving the receiver. They're only using that DSP chip for certain things. So that's why it doesn't mute, and it doesn't sound like a DSP-based radio like the Texan PL330 and so on. Okay, so Man Reader DX or PL880 has the DSP-capable chip. So it is multiple bandwidths. That's it. It has the chip also. It's just in the design. They made a different design so that in the end, we're tuning an analog PLL receiver, but it actually adds the capabilities of the DSP chip for the bandwidths, for example. So it's kind of a different design. Well, the other one are all DSP chip based directly, and they all mute, unfortunately. I'm not even sure they can actually remove the mute from that. Uh, Simon Templar, nice to have you on board. Says, not bragging, Jill. It's always great shows, videos, and great members. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, aviation. I just, uh, actually, I just tuned it and, and showed you guys what I was listening. Uh, the BBC. It's coming in okay. A little noisy, but it's, it's there. Jim Gordon, what was the most powerful shortwave broadcast transmissions? I remember where the Moscow briefly used 1,000 kilowatts for its North American service. Uh, one megawatt for shortwave, strictly shortwave. I don't think more than 1,000 kilowatts was ever used. I could be wrong. Somebody could, you know, tell me, no, no, yeah, there were more than that. But for shortwave, no. For medium wave and long wave, that's a different story. Uh, there's been up to two megawatts of power being used on medium wave and long wave, particularly. But on shortwave, I think 1,000 kilowatts was pretty much the most power someone ever used. Imagine the transmitter of that thing. One megawatt. Can you imagine the transmitters? Youch. I would not want to be near that transmitter or any of those antennas uh, at, at 1,000 kilowatts. I can tell you that. And 6 rls nice to have you here from Berkeley, California. Uh, various ham related events happening today. Cool, cool. So what else do we have? Uh, we have uh, Rick, nice to have you here. Gabriel says, people, smash the like button. 225 people watching right now. Eric Cottrell, hearing BBC on 5875 here in Boston. Cool, cool. Uh, XFM, final straw was I couldn't find tank oil for 48 meters and its frequency changed time again. Uh, to show tonight, doing a show. I was thinking doing a show, but you couldn't find anything. Oh, so sorry. Would have been nice to have you on the bands. Uh, Bod123, uh, 5875, good in Reykjavik. Uh, Iceland, Matt Thomas, BBC 5875, decent in USA. Uh, aviation, BBC here in England on his R108. Um, isn't picking up. Yeah, bro, you're close to Wurferton, eh? So it might be just skipping over you. Dr. Sisop got some FM overload on 4 to 6 megahertz again, going to call station and complain. Uh, weak pirates on 6955. XFM Shortwave says we're probably two 500 kilowatt transmitters combined. Frequency changes would be difficult, though. Yeah, probably that. Uh, Jim Gordon, you're right. 880 has multiple bandwidths, but it is not DSP on all bands. Now, that's that's the way it works. It's, it's like the 990, the H501X. What they do is they did use the chip to add features, including the bandwidths. But it's not what's driving the radio. That's why you don't have the 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 soft mute when tuning around. 
and and a few of the other quirks that DSP radios usually have. Um, Beam C bike, nice to have you on board. Where do I have to register for the Zoom? So here it is, guys. Once again, Zoom meeting. Um, I will repeat it another time at the end. The official SWL channel will be having its first Zoom meeting at the end of the month, Sunday, um, March 27th at 19 UTC. That's 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we will, I want to see your face if you want. If you don't want, I can hear your voice and we can, of course, interact. It is going to be a nice Zoom meeting for the channel in collaboration and thanks to the uh, Canadian International DX Club Zoom and Sheldon Harvey. I want to thank so much. So here is the link to register for the Zoom meeting. You go there, you enter your uh, your email, your name, your email. You'll receive the registration with a passcode to connect uh, when it, the event will happen. And hope to see as many people as possible there. 32 people right now, according to Sheldon, have registered. So why not join? It's happening Sunday, March 27th at 19 UTC, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And it won't be the last one. I would say that probably if it's a success and we like it at some other time, we'll be doing this for sure. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Arthur's out of Crafters Kitchen. Most certainly many USSR comrades lived near radio Moscow transmitters. <laughs> Brian Penny just received a copy of the book, A Radio Journey Across Seven Continents by the short SWL Fest presenter, Captain Bruce Churchill. If you love QSLs, order this book. Don't bother with the downloads. So, uh, A Radio Journey Across Seven Continents by Captain Bruce Churchill. So check that out. Madrid DX, I know that some digital hi-fi tuners can be hardware modified, so there's no muting during tuning. I have a Sony tuner that has the muting removed uh, for the portables. Yeah, I don't know. Nobody has ever come forward on that, and I don't know if it's possible, honestly. Uh, David, former RFE RL shortwave broadcast transmitter in uh, Pals, Girona, north of my QTH in Barcelona, fed one megawatt into a curtain dipole array youch that's pretty crazy pretty crazy ah oh, man aviation ak ek says he went on a local forest and it was a huge hill and his r108 could hear turkey saudi arabia india china and loads more yep pretty cool pretty cool so hope to have as many uh, of you out there for the Zoom meeting at the end of the month. San Faro's Ananco S501, X990X880, and S8800 as their triple conversion receivers. They list the S880 as a PLL DSP receiver, but not the others. Maybe the S880 is one. No, they're all like that, San Faro's. They all have the DSP chip. The 880, 990X, and 501X. You would not have the multiple bandwidths without them. That chip is what gives the multiple bandwidths. Uh, they are all DSP chipped. It's just that it's dependent on the layer. Um, the ones that they actually call the DSP receivers are the ones that mute. The ones that are just called PLL do not mute, but they all have that chip. I, that I know for sure. Kevin, have you ever put a tracking device on Mr. Paul? I saw a documentary on cats and where they travel always surprises their honors. It came to my mind, Kevin, at some point, especially not last year, the year before. He was gone for hours at a time. And um, it came to mind that I might like to have some kind of tracker to see what he does and where he goes. 
Um, I would, I would, I'd be curious to know, honestly. Um, <clears throat> so what else do we have? XFM looking forward to it. Cool. Cool. It'll be nice to have you there. Um, 45 registered. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's coming up. Uh, CHU on 14670, very weak in Boston. Just barely here, time pips. Uh, Laura Robertson just registered. Jim Gordon on AM, most powerful transmitter was 2,500 kilowatt at Kaliningrad, Russia. Related voice of Russia, a Christian station, call station, and finally a LGBT station uh, on 1386 kilohertz. Really strong in Northern Europe. Wow. Scott registered. Cool. Cool, you barely mail. Nice to have you here. Yeah, that's the thing. The front end of Zen Faros. The front end. The other ones have the chip, but it's not the final front end. So uh the power is Jill, 51 registered. <laughs> So, uh, Mad Radio DXer did a solder modification. My Texan PL660 disabled the AGC. Uh, Texan PL880 can also have the AGC disabled via a hidden feature. So, I suppose soft muting can be done. Who knows? Yeah. Skip N2EI. Nice to have you on board. He says he's registered. Be there or be square. <laughs> John Beckham just registered. Uh, David has um, shared the uh, link for the transmitter site. So, um, so what I'm saying is maybe the only S8800 is the has the PLL front end. Yeah. Anyways, they all probably have the same the this the same kind of design. One step is the DSP, and the others is uh, with the PLL and stuff. Okay, um, Kevin says ju uh, just out of the documentary was all that all cats have a set territory and mark and defend and send cues laid down every week. It seems to get smaller as they age. I saw a um, I saw a um, a documentary here, uh, the one hour documentary, and they had put tracking and cameras on cats. And their owners were so amazed that to see where the cat goes. But was what was very surprising, they were saying that the territory that most cats do wasn't that big, actually, and was pretty much always the same places. But I, I like that, especially with Paul, because Paul is like, you know, a very He's, he's very social, so if somebody calls him, he's going to go and see them. So I was thinking if I could find some little kit with a very small camera, it would I would love to just not track him, see where he goes and what he does, which would be nice. And, you know, when he meets other cats and stuff, because, I mean, when he disappears, he disappears. He's like, I don't know where he is. He might not be very far, but obviously he ignores me when I call him. <laughs> Sheldon Harvey says, I got more followers than Brother Stare. I hope that would be actually very, very good. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Bill Mead, nice music at 5995, which is Mali, Radio TV Mali. Uh, Dave and Luan, nice to have you here from Kentucky. And uh, let's start tuning the bands a little bit. And once again, just before we uh, tune the bands, Zoom meeting coming up, the first official SWL Zoom meeting in collaboration with the Canadian International DX Club, uh, thanks to Sheldon Harvey. March 27th, Sunday, March 27th, 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 19 hours UTC. Go and register and be there. Show your face. You don't have to. You can just hear your voice. It's fine. Just be there and have fun. We're going to have a discussion, a roundtable discussion. We're going to just, you know, um, just have fun. Okay, let's uh, let's place things correctly here. I'm going to to 
take this here, move this here, put this in this direction, and we're going to, we're going to, let me just, uh, let me just uh, turn on the light. There we go. Let's do the bands, guys. How about it? Turn uh, turn that radio on. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put it like this, pretty much. Okay, guys. I'm gonna have the uh, San Gian ATS 909 X2 is a tuning radio today. I do have also the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery on the gaming laptop. And I'm going to use my Chromebook on the left for purpose of identifying whatever station we're going to be listening to with the frequencies. I'm going to put the sound of the radio. So that's the audio of the San Gian. And so hope that you're going to enjoy that. We're, uh, right now I'm on 5875, which is the BBC frequency. And we're going to tune around and see what's out there. Uh, and see what's out there. Um, good question. Why does single sideband have a higher noise floor than AM mode on DSP based radios? Actually, it's more of an illusion because in SSB, it should have less noise, apparent noise, but probably what you notice is more of the noise because there's no carrier. So because there's no carrier in between the transmissions, all you hear is the static. Where in AM mode, what happens is you actually have the carrier that suppresses that noise that you have. Scott, a uh, question. I've heard the synchronization, the sync uh, in the uh, texting is not working well. Uh, how close to the same results would you be able to do a single sideband, upper and lower sideband? Honestly, personally, I think you're getting very similar results. Very similar results. Because you are uh, replacing the carrier like Sync does. And you're choosing the upper or the lower sideband like Sync does. Um, Sync just does it automatically without you having to fiddle. Um, but honestly, I'm pr I, I, I would think that it's darn close. That's why I've never really cared much about Sync detection, personally. Can you try 15390 and 9420? Fifteen three nine zero. Absolutely nothing. And ninety four twenty. Voice of Greece coming in quite well. So uh, that's pretty much what we have here. Let's remove the music so we don't get copyright strikes. Um. Gustavo Bernandez, hearing BBC 5875, coming in good. Which software, Bob Lewin, are uh, using on your AirSpy HF Plus Discovery and why? Um, because of all the software that I can use, um, I find the SDR um, console V3 to be nice um, and better than, much better than SDR Sharp. Even though if I had the choice, I would use the uh, AirSpy on SDR Uno instead. So, uh, 8992. Look at that, 8992. Alpha. 
Yeah, there is a tone on 8992, eh? I hear the buzzing, but you know what? It's not, I don't think it's jamming, uh, Zen Pharaohs. 8992 is the only frequency that I hear that tone almost all the time, every day of the week, every time of the week. I think it's there's something on that frequency also. It, I don't think it's jamming. I think it's just a buzzing that's there. Because that buzz, I hear it all the time. It's like 24 hours, uh, but it's not always that strong. It's not always that strong. But it's definitely there on 8992. If I go on 11175, it's much quieter. I just noticed something interesting. I didn't think about that, but the uh, audio filters of the St. Jean, if I put the audio filter, it actually doesn't impact the line out. It has no effect. I hear the difference in the speaker. I don't hear it in the line out. Huh, that's interesting. I thought it would affect the audio of the line out also. It just affects the audio output of the amplifier on the speaker. That is interesting. Um, yep, no buzz on 11175. Yeah, I don't think it's jamming like Matt says. I also don't think it's jamming. I think it's just the... Because uh, now that they're gone, is it still there? There's definitely a buzz there. Like I said, that buzz is not new. It's been there for a long time. And it's only A992 that has it. Never on other frequencies do I hear this one. Uh, remember when we uh, listened to uh, to this last week? We were hearing, or the week before, we were hearing kind of a siren-like buzz. It would start like a siren and go up. Well, now it's that, but with just the buzz. You see, the buzz is gone now, A992. Nine nine two. Alpha. November. Go. Bravo. Five. Bravo. Put it here on the. Uh... Alpha. November. Go. Bravo. Five. Bravo. Standby message follow. Alpha. That's on eleven one seven five five here on the display here. Spain, John Beckham has Spain on 96.90. Blind Picker, W0RAB, Rob in Connecticut. Nice to have you on board. We have... Uh, Jason, the D90AMC, wonder if that bus is coming from the French Air Force out of France. They're listed on being on 9992. It's possible. It is possible. Who knows? So um, I am a little surprised that the audio filters are not affecting the line out. That's interesting. Kind of interesting. Oh, well. Let's uh, 
Let's go down. I'm going to start at... Um, what time is it? I'm going to start at 5,000 kilohertz, guys. And I'm going to put myself in upper sideband. And we're going to move up from there, 5,000 kilohertz, if you guys want to tune around here. And we're going to see what's on the bands. Oh, yeah, the keyboard is nice. I like the uh, the color-changing keyboard. So let's check out what's out there. I'm going to move up from 5,000 kilohertz here. Go to 188, some radio teletype. It's 59, 30, 53, 39. 53, 57, I believe, is the FT8 frequency of ham radio 60 meter band. Before 50, nothing really, and very weak. Five five zero five Shannon Ireland Shannon Ireland five five zero five Hey Greg Wow you're not far my birthday is next week March twentieth So we're three days apart I was born in nineteen sixty nine Levy Nathan, nice to have you here from Israel. 8992 is clear. Just in here. We're at 5,800. Throw ourselves in AM mode. So the first signal on 49 meters that's really there is the BBC. BBC 5 and 7 5. Not too bad. This is from uh, Wolferton. I don't think I'm going to do a special birthday stream, Matt. I'm, I'm, um, this year is 40 years of my, um, 40 years of my radio listening. So, um, at some point going into the summer, there's going to be some something special coming up. Burger Stare from Bulgaria on 5900. Fifty nine forty is Algeria via France. Radio France on fifty nine sixty. Radio France five nine six zero. Mm -hmm. 
pour changer notre façon de faire. On va l'aborder euh, très simplement et ça va nous faire au cours de la semaine. Je pense que euh, tous les joueurs euh, rêvaient de, de discuter de ce match en euh, l'année prochaine, donc même en gros. Pour moi, je pense qu'il serait de beaucoup de pression, mais je ne serais pas de vous dire parce que ça serait un peu de bonheur. Yeah, the Anna Sounder, it's always fun to see them streak across the SDRs all the time. Fifty nine eighty, I believe, is Turkey. Five nine eight zero, voice of Turkey. Yep, in uh, Turkish, their Turkish programs. Pretty good signal. Radio TV Mali that I like. It's always very exotic. Radio TV Mali. This tone comes from, believe it or not, a computer in the house. Something in the noise on 6020. Seems to be one of those Asian signals coming in already. 6020. Trying to radio is there in Spanish. Six zero four zero is also the uh, radio Algeria on uh, via France. Six zero seven zero is probably CFRX out of Toronto here. CFRX, which is the which is the uh, equivalent of. Uh, 10, 10 CFRB. <laughs> well, I guess, I don't know, Dr. Sissa. He's there anyways. Bill Curry says the 6925 parrot is off. Uh, Artis Alley Crafters Kitchen, yes. The uh, broadcast from Bulgaria comes from the old Radio Sofia Bulgaria transmitter site, which is and has stayed intact and in good working order. Somebody in Bulgaria thinks that it might be a good idea to keep them up and in running capability. GA Dakota 5995 is cool. Uh, John Bacon has 5980 Northeast Florida. Dr. Sissov's got something on 5135. I wonder if there's anything there on 5135. Is it in sideband or AM mode? There's nothing listed here on 59, 59, uh, 5145. WBCQ, it's there on 6160. Radio Romania with the interval signal on 6170. Radio Romania, which just ended its English language broadcast to Eastern North America on 6195. This is the voice of America. It should stop in a couple of minutes from the Sao Tome transmitter site. 6195. The Russian government has turned its efforts to preventing Russian citizens from finding out what's really going on in Ukraine. Well, forget, guys. Coming up on Sunday, March 27th, the Zoom meeting for the official SWL channel. It'll be fun. It'll be fun to have you guys there. 
You know, XFM, it actually has the same thing as uh, any religious broadcaster. I was listening to a uh, WWN Catholic station. They have a call-in show in the afternoon. What made me listen to it was the fact that they had a live call show. People were actually live. So I was listening through 15610, and I thought, because they ask every caller where they're listening. So I thought, I'm going to take note of everybody that mentions they're listening through shortwave. I can tell you in like 30 or 40 callers, one, one says he was on shortwave. Everybody else was listening to an AM or FM local station outlet, which kind of tells me I don't think many people are listening to the religious stuff on shortwave in general. Nice to have you here, Roger Gibbs. Stuart, nice to have you here from uh, Ohio, W8STU. Bonsoir, Christian. Fais attention à toi. À la prochaine. Booger stare, I like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, CW on 6115. Joseph, 8992. No, I don't think it's jammed. That, that noise has been there forever. I, I've noted that noise forever. It comes from some other transmitter or something else. Regarding the times and frequencies of VOA programs, right to program schedules, Voice of America, Washington, D.C., 20547. I should write for a schedule. <laughs> Can I have a VOA schedule, please? To the right. <laughs> Joseph. Sunwave, I'm too lazy to walk 15 feet to the radio. Um, oops. And surf bands, I'm, it's parked on 20 meters. Yeah, we talked about that in the fest, uh, XFM. So they're turning off. And let's continue tuning. Let's go uh, in sideband and continue upwards from 6195 here. See what's up there. Using the ATS 909X2. One nice thing about it is the big display is easy to see, even on the camera. Oh, we've got some uh, some weather facts. Some weather facts. Let's uh, let's do a little test here. I'm going to lower that nice for you guys, and I'm going to put the volume here. And I'm going to check out. If we'll be able to uh, get some decode. So that means it's just stopped. It's going to be a pause. It's going to give me the time to fire up the weather facts. If I can find it. And it's restarting. Droid Navtex. The hell is the fax thing? Always nice to never find what you want when you want to find it. Come on, where is it? Not finding the app that you want is always fun. And the map is starting, so it's going to be done by the time I find the darn app. PSK, Navtex. Oh, here it is. HF Water. We'll see. Look at that, guys. It's decoding live on the tablet.
Yeah, I know, Mickey. I actually had it a couple of years ago. That wall calendar was beautiful. I had, uh, I was listening to a broadcast and they were actually telling you to order one, where to send an email for one. And I had received it. I was so happy. Uh, Greg, um, a ham radio transceiver is there are some decently priced ham transceivers out there. Um, you might be able to get in for not too expensive, but it will be more expensive than just listening to uh, to the radio, that's for sure. Uh, yes, yeah, Sunwave, I think that's what I have here. Wolfie, uh, Wolfie, uh, fax thing. So here is decoding the weather map right now. That's what's coming down. It's actually not very. Uh... Can I move it here? Here we go. Well, that's not a good way to do it, but uh, that line isn't. So let's start column. Click on the start column in the image. There we go. Now that's that's easy. I like that an app that's easy like that. Just put the start column, and that's it. So here we go, guys. I'm decoding a uh, weather chart right now. Uh, this is with a Fire HD um, tablet from Amazon that I have modified to get the uh, the app store. Slant correction. How do you, I don't know, it works though. Whoops, nope, that's not what I want to do. Cancel. Slant, red cross, top left corner. Okay. And a line. I don't know, I don't know if I'm understanding this well. I don't think so. Oh well. Anyways, so as you see, I'm decoding a weather chart from Boston. I don't know. I'm going to have to check that. Okay. Here, here, finish. Oh, that works great. So you put the top, the top, so to slant correction. This app is great, actually. Slant correction. You put the red arrow on the top of the slant. Next, the blue arrow on the bottom where the slant is. And finish. And it actually automatically corrects the slant. This is actually really good. This, I have to say, is the easiest app I've ever seen to correct a map that you're decoding. It's not my favorite app. <laughs> oh man, this is cool. Um, so the name of this app is, I think that's what it's, he just said. Uh, let me just go here, info. So this is Wolfie, by Wolfie LLC. It's called HF Weather Facts. I, it's not free. I don't remember how much it costs, but I know it's not free. You got to pay for it. But it works great. It really works great. It's totally worth it. Totally worth it its price. I got to say that. Um, so I'm on 6339 upper sideband for the... Uh, for the, and I'm not using any cables. As you notice, I'm just using the audio out of the speaker of the radio. So super easy. You don't have to go complex to actually decode anything. So this is the decoded weather chart coming through. We're very clear too. Very, very nice. So a live decoding. We don't do that very often. Live decoding of stuff. 
So uh, if you guys want to have, you have an Android, I don't know, is it available on um, iOS? Do you know, guys, if uh, iOS has it, if somebody can answer that, it'd be nice if you have that on the iPad and iPhones too, honestly. Um, so let's go down. Dan, nice to have you on board. It says very cool uh, chart. And uh, 15 Fahrenheit in Ohio. Nice to have you on board. Uh, Greg, how cool when you tune the bands. Thank you very much. So Sunwave has it. Wolfie HF Winterfax. Great app. Great app. Very easy to use. You guys have noticed that I, I actually fixed the slant and the start column in just a couple of clicks. A couple of touches of the screen. It was nice. So this is really, really nice. Sergeant Rock, nice to have you on board. Uh, much warmer there than Montreal. <laughs> nice to have you here from the Hawaii Islands. Um, well, the weather chart tell us how much snow here in Boston. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Debias777. I am using an MLA30 loop that is outdoors that I'm sharing with all the all the radios. I can use up to four radios on the same with uh, multi-coupler that I have. So anyways, even when I'm talking, the decoding is pretty nice. It's pretty cool chart here. So, uh, and of course, if you're uh, listening at the right time, you can even have the, um, the decoding of a weather, um, a weather picture. Because uh, they do have that. So this is nice. Little example of decoding here. So there's some stuff to do on shortwave, guys. Believe it or not. Um, iOS has HF weather facts, 499. From Wolfie, uh, LLC, uh, the same one, the same guy, Wolfie. So I uh, get it. It's great. I know that on um, the... Um, I know that on the... Um, uh, the iPhone, you have a lot of apps by Black Cat Systems that do pretty much um, all all modes that you want um, that are there. But I there are a couple of Black Cat System apps that I don't find that great, honestly. Okay, that's a different one. HF Radio Facts by Black Cat Systems, a different one. So Wolfie has only Android. Okay. Oh, it's sad because it would have been a great one. Um, I believe I've used the one uh, from Black Cat Systems also. Um, okay, the Black Cat Systems. Okay. So let's uh, continue tuning around. As we just decoded... Some weather facts stuff. That's west of seventy west and these ten to twenty minutes elsewhere. Six five zero one. Six five zero one. This is uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, Marine Weather Broadcast. Six five zero one, upper sideband. Six five zero one, upper sideband. Which is the. Uh, Marine weather broadcasts. Oh yeah, the six five zero one. Actually, most of the weather broadcasts from the from uh, Virginia are distorted. Take care, Bobby Burgess. Then Farrell's eleven seven eighty Radio Nacional Amazona, very loud and clear. Five to seven feet. 
Thursday night. Southeast winds less than 10 knots. Seas 5 to 6 feet. Let's do something here. Atlantic quarter south of 22 north, west of 65 west. I'm curious. Two. I think I do have another one here. This one is this one. And the other one. We're going to do something. Where's this one going? This, oh, this is not what I want. Okay. It's a different one. I'm going to try something. I'll just switch. We're going to do a little test here with you guys. So this is the audio of the San Gian. East winds 10 to 20 knots. Seas 5 to 7 feet. Wednesday. And now, Southeast. we're going to do the same test, but I'll be using the, I'll be using the Texan H501X for the audio capability. West and 65 West. Which one you like better? East winds 10 to 20 knots. Seas 7 to 9 feet. Sunday. East winds 10 to 20 knots. Seas 7 to 9 feet. There's a big punch, but Sunday night. East winds 10 the to audio 20 is 100 feet. times better. Seas 7 to 9 feet. On the H501X Sunday. for the same single sideband transmission. Seven to ten feet. Monday. East wind fifteen to twenty-five knots. Seas and now we're going to go back to the San Gian. And one of the defaults that I've noticed, one of these, it's not a fault, it's a design, but I noticed is that the San Gian does not have the audio filters, do not affect line out. So, uh, did I put the wire in the correct place? Right here, there it goes. Thursday, East Winds Tabitha, Mount, C7 to 9 feet. Huge difference. Thursday Huge night. difference. The 501 is amazingly better. C7 to 8 feet. I could, if I want, um, uh, David. The problem is I don't have the, the second cable set up because if I could, I have two cables. I could have had both radios side by side. Uh, I think that's going to be something that I would maybe try to do next time because <laughs> I could have both radios side by side tuning the same thing and just having to switch on the console, honestly. But the Texans audio is uh, light years ahead. Light years ahead. And add the fact, the insult, add the insult that in single sideband, they have, Sanjian has decided that it was not important to have bandwidths on single sideband. I got, I, I don't understand that one. In terms of cosmetics, uh, even though the, the H501X isn't bad looking, uh, it is definitely the San Gian is a winner on the looks. It looks modern. It looks nice. That display is beautiful here. Uh, that display is more is much better than than the, the Texan one. That that definitely. So I guess all radios have positives and negatives. Yeah, that's that uh, that's I did think about that when I switched because I never switch usually, so I never you know I didn't set up for that. 
But now I realize it would have been nice to have that capability now. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that uh, that is set up for the next shows. So it'll be easy to have more than one radio and just switch between them. David Vasquez, try eight seven six four. Eight seven six four. Let's try it out here. Eight seven six four. Fresh winds will proceed and follow this front. Gulf of Mexico. North of 26, north west of 87 west. Tonight. Northeast winds 15 to 25. Uh, or 13089 also. Let's try 13089 here. Sunday. Yeah. Nope. I don't hear it here. But you might hear it. Remember that these broadcasts on the East Coast are for Marine. They'll be harder to receive on the West Coast because they're broadcast away from you. The broadcast for the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, yeah. So everybody gives the audio winner is definitely the 501X. Yeah, Bill, the weather broadcast is a mess. It is is huge. When you look at the waterfall of the SDR, you see that it's all all wide and messed up. It's really not a very nice. You know, that makes me wonder, because that's what I was talking about with someone. It makes you wonder, nobody tells them, nobody's listening, so they're broadcasting this for nothing or what? You know, so clear and more full and 501x. So everybody agrees the 501x is a winner for uh, for uh, the um, for the sound uh, and add the fact that it's stereo with two speakers. Uh, Chris Powell, what type of coax do you use for what for the cabling? Um, or for so for the antenna, it's the stock cable from the MLA30 that plugs into the multi-coupler with an adapter. As for the rest, they're all custom cables, uh, B and C to whatever I need for the radio. So in this case, it's B and C to uh, for the antenna, B and C to one eighth for the audio. These are very high quality cables, by the way. Uh, and they are custom made actually uh, for the most part um, they come from Amazon but purchased on Amazon through a store that deals and only sells electronic stuff here in Canada so I could probably have the same quality make them up myself if I want from the electronic store that I have not far from here but lack of time and being a little lazy meant I'm going to pay a a little premium for the cable, but have them already made for me so that I can have all sorts of cables. So I have, I don't know how many different cables here that I can plug anything into anything else pretty much right now. Chuck Yunkin, 6501 S10 Plus. Scott, Texan, candy to my ears. Then Pharaoh's Fairfair G7 is better audio on 6501 USB than either of yours uh, over a decent TV sound bar. So, yeah, well, the FRG is known to have pretty good audio. And if it has decent a, uh, AGC, definitely could easily beat, absolutely. Uh, VT Radio, Paul AA1SU from uh, Northern Vermont. Nice to have you here. What do we have? Looks aren't everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the only way to have it constant, uh, Kevin, is to have the power adapter plugged in, which I never like because it induces noise, although the St. Gian power adapter is pretty good. Uh, but even when you have no power adapter, 
I like a radio that gives you the choice on batteries to have to have um, the light on all the time. Absolutely. Especially at night, you know, you're playing around with the radio. I hate it when the, the display goes dark. I keep pressing buttons, you know, to, to, to I keep pressing the buttons, uh, the one from the squelch here, to make sure that it's always on. <laughs> Um, yeah, Sanjian has RDS. That is a definite advantage if you like RDS on FM for Sanjian um, compared to Texan. You can damage all three frequencies good here. All your frequencies are better. David Vazquez has the San Francisco radio, loud and clear, 8843. So Sheldon says, registration for the official SWL channel Zoom uh, are halted at 56 right now. So there's more than 200 people watching. Uh, remember that on Sunday, March 27th at 19 hours UTC, that's 3 p.m. Eastern, we are going to host the first official SWL channel Zoom meeting. Have you know, it's going to be fun to meet you guys, maybe ask questions, know a little more about all of you, see some faces I've never seen before, because you guys see my face all the time. So, you know, um, also have, um, you know, maybe a little bit of discussion on radio, about your radio background. Just have a fun meeting, all of us together. I think this is going to be cool. I want to thank, once again, the Canadian International DX Club and Sheldon Harvey for the ability to use their Zoom meeting for this event. So it's coming up on Sunday, March 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's 19 UTC. Click the link that Sheldon has shared to register. All you have to do is enter your name and email address, and you'll get the details on how to get into the meeting and share with us. Don't want to you don't want to show your face. Don't worry. You don't need a camera to be on Zoom. You can have just the audio if you want. It doesn't matter. We don't. You know, you, some people are camera shy. I totally get that. You guys know how camera shy I am. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing, <laughs> but um, you know, some people are camera shy. I totally understand that. I mean, before I did all of this, I was camera shy too. So you know what. Um, no cameras, no problem. Just just a microphone. Say hi, and uh, you're gonna be a great gang of people, and we'll be able to know a little more about each other. Also, at the same time, you guys know all about me, but you know, uh, maybe we want to know a little more about you. So uh, why not register? It's gonna be fun. And let's continue tuning around uh, where we are now, where the uh, the. Uh, Weather broadcast has just stopped for marine weather. Uh, Sunwave, like the light on the CC Skywave SSB. Yep. Um, yeah, Ethan, the lead executive, does uh, mute when you tune. Well, me, New York Radio Working Caribbean flights on 6577. Yeah, no copyright strikes on Zoom. <laughs> Hey, you'll have everybody will have uh yes, Paul needs to be there. Absolutely. You'll have the, 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 the possibility to show us your radios, Robert. Absolutely. It'll be fun. So let's continue tuning upwards to six five. Six six. 6604 Gander Radio Weather Station for a nautical Gander, Newfoundland, Canada. If you guys want to try the different frequencies while it's still there for three minutes, 6604 10051 coming in. And Thirteen two seven zero. That one I don't hear right now. 
And there's the one down three, four, eight, five. Not making it. So six, six, zero, four. I'm going to go back here. Gander, aeronautical weather station from Gander, Newfoundland, Canada. And six RLS, your reception sounds like mine was in the 60s, 70s. I can't hear any of those stations here, just noise using MLA 30, but just noise today. Yeah. But you're west. So a lot of these are probably not making it yet. There's still a lot of daylight, and I'm on low frequencies here. Uh, so it's still a lot of daylight between the east and the west coast. No problem, VT Radio. You just check in when you can. And do check it out on the uh, CIDX Club uh, webpage. For you guys, I want to have any all news of anything that there is to listen to and check out uh, for what's happening with Ukraine. Uh, focus on Ukraine. Uh, a lot of links and a lot of information of anything from online streaming to Kiwi SDRs to um, frequencies to listen to on shortwave. Uh, lots of stuff, online video feeds. Focus on Ukraine at cidxclub.ca slash Ukraine. Lots of info on that uh, free um, that free information that we that that Sheldon mostly did the big big job of, and of course with the help of others like Mickey Dalmage and so on for the links and stuff. So uh, I have a few things in there, but uh, I will not take credit for making a lot of. I got a, just a few little things in there. That's it. Uh, but uh, Sheldon Harvey and then Mickey Dalmage did worked hard finding links and finding information to put in there. Uh, definitely. Okay, let's continue on. As we are now at 2230 UTC. I am now almost at 6800 kilohertz. And we are at 7,000 kilohertz, which is the 40-meter uh, amateur radio band. So, um, Matt, 13,270, good. Um, Robert Cross, 6604, not too bad. John Beckham, 13,2670, coming into Northeast Florida on the CO down R108. Daniel Mark LeBlanc. Uh, nice to have you on board from the Shediac River, New Brunswick. And um, I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, uh, Daniel. So 60 people registered. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Nice to have you here. Let's tune around 40 meters. Lots of Morse code. Lots of Morse code. Let's check that out on the SDR here. I see a lot of stuff in here. All the little signals in there. Look at all the Morse code. Pretty crazy. Skibs in there. Tons of CW. So I'm going to put myself in lower sideband, 40 meter tuning of uh, the, the 40 meter band. Same 169, lower sideband, 7169. <laughs> well, the account that uh, CIDX has right now for this month because of the shortwave fest, uh, we have an extra limit of uh, 500. 
So we could be up to 500, I believe, right now for the month of March. Barry has 8992 without the buzzing. Tuberuk Tim, the ham guys like 80 meters. Uh, cool, Daniel Mark LeBlanc. Nice to have you here and hope you're following along. Uh, 6577 uh, USB for uh, air traffic control. Greg, how do I like the Sanjian 909X2? Um, it's okay. It's not my first choice. Or no, it will not be my, it's not my first choice radio when I, uh, when I, um, I choose one. But it, it's okay. You know, I mean, it does a decent job at what it's supposed to do. It has a few, a few flaws that annoy me. 7188 lower sideband. Seventy two oh nine. Seventy two seventeen. Because all my life I never had a decent radio and I never had a, a decent microphone. So now, you know, I'm Let's put ourselves in the AM. There's some broadcast here. Something on 7250, very wobbly and difficult to, to really, at this time, this China radio. Seventy two sixty. Seventy two sixty. Which would be CRI music from Chinese transmitter site. And uh, we have visitors, guys. Look at that. Paul and his girlfriend. Two visitors. So we have Paul and his girlfriend just showing up. Paul wants to call 7221. Here I am on 7221. Lower side bands. Okay, Dr. Sisov, I'm going to try that in a uh, time signal at the same time uh, for CV and time signal. Keegan, nice to have you here from Northwest Arkansas. Heard a very weak signal, but nothing more. So let's go back to 72 AML, 7260. Try to stop on something clearer. 7,400. WBCQ and 7,490. I've been having a lot of pain on my left and right hand. I'm going to pray for me. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rice and the Saints. This is Sister Sherry, and I'm just calling Sister in today, Sherry. and uh, 
I saw the um, resources on the webpage of overcomingministry.org. Hey. And uh, we was just thrilled and <laughs> that is, reading all the different that is a, <laughs> um, literature and listening to little the little brush between Minyan and uh, <laughs> oh, man. so you guys just saw the attack between Paul and his girlfriend. getting ready to go in and be induced. For, uh, her pregnancy. Uh, and, uh, SDR software on the screen there is um, is uh, SDR console v3. It's running a um, air spy HF plus discover. And uh, lift us up that uh, we kept out fear and that there would be peace. She's had a Kevin cat cams blood pressure. Rock. So I just thank you for that and bless you all. And Voice of Greece, G R E E C E, Robert. Sound of the Lord in the most holy mount that all. Some broadcast on 7500, probably like in the gray line zone, like last week or two weeks ago. <laughs> Paul, your shortwave stud. I like that. <laughs> Well, he's a shortwave stud. Uh, VT Radio calling you in 3330. Uh, here we go. 3830. Going to try it. I got somebody close now. Oh, look at that. Yep, hearing you. That's for sure. Yeah, hearing you real well. I would have to go in the kitchen to make a contact, though. Thanks. So, we heard you. Pretty cool. Yeah, I know, an update. Oh, I don't have viruses on my computer, apparently. <laughs> so we heard you, Paul. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. On the same G and ATS 909X2. That means we're going to have to try a uh, an HF contact with the uh, uh, one night with the uh, the FT450 in the kitchen. Unfortunately, if the radio would be here, I could have tried it, but I can't. Barry, I'm going to have to figure out the interference issue between laptop and DX390. Annoying radio is on the other side of the room. Yeah, uh, that happens quite a lot. Sometimes it's cables. If you have a desktop computer, it could be the cables. If it's a laptop, the power supplies of some of the laptops are banned for noise levels. Uh, Yvonne says, I watch a channel about abandoned homes. They came across a Zenith Transoceanic 12 band in mint condition. Wow. Dr. Sisop, uh, Paul's girlfriend name is Mignon. And uh, she's been on and off. She's been on and off for like three years, but now she's been, she's been here pretty much all winter with the cold, spending most of her time here now. Um, so, uh, tech guy, don't look at me that way. That's pretty much. That's pretty much what happens with them. It's like, what are you? What are you looking at? <laughs> the worst part is, um, it's mostly a Paul thing because very often, she's super nice with him. So tuning around. WRMI on seven seven eight zero, not very strong, but it's there. Yeah. 
that's cool, Robert Cross, tuning around with old, um, older radios. It's fun also. Oval Shrimp, an MLA 30 loop antenna. Yeah, the power supply. It happens very often. Not all brands of laptop have good power supplies. This uh, this Asus is not bad, but the best best laptop power supplies I've ever seen were always with the Toshiba laptops. Toshiba laptops have the quietest power supplies of all. Uh, this one, it's okay, but it's noisier than my Toshiba, especially, especially if I game. Because if I game, it actually ramps up the power real well. It gets super noisy. Um, John Bickham still getting 25,000 kilohertz WWV. Nissan, nice to have you here. Is getting radio extend uh, strong into Dublin on 2761. Cool. Lots of these uh, marine stations there in uh, that range in, in Europe. Danielle Mark says, um, when yesterday I was scanning through a large list of AM channels, tonight not one yet. Any advice? Um, if you're talking about long distance, um, wait a little more. Wait an hour, an hour and a half until it's really, really dark. And you're going you're gonna to hear some. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump to 9,000 kilohertz and tune up the 31 meter band from there. Let's start with upper side band. And from here, something Week on ninety two fifty five. WINB on ninety two sixty five. We're going to go on nine five zero zero. So it's up there. Ninety-three thirty, world's last chance. WBCQ coming in with their five hundred kilowatt blowtorch. John Hummel Newell, a ferrite, put it on the. Um, most of the ferrites are often put at the um, at, at two places. One is near the computer, so that the computer noise going into the power supply, and often at the power supply output. Voice of Grace 9420 is pretty good. It's some music. Radio Marti 9565.
That Brazilian on 9666 is actually real good tonight. 9666 point something. I got it here on 9667, which is that Brazilian station uh, radio uh, Voz Missionara, something like that. That is uh, broadcasting with some uh, Radio Voz Missionaria from Brazil, 9667. Spain 9690 extremely good let's check out uh, well, I'm gonna put myself on 7165 so here we go um, David if you want to try it I'm there I hear something weak. I don't know if it's you, but I hear something weak on 7165. So I don't know if it's you. It is very, very weak. Very, very weak. If it's you, it's uh, it's weak. Let's go uh, back to AM here. So nine six six six, pretty good. I guess I was hearing you. I would say, uh, uh, David, but uh, very very weak, very weak. So Spain on ninety six ninety, really good. Spain 9690, real good. Robert Cross, hoping to get his shortwave 7600 restored soon. Daniel Marks says 7165 was coming out coming loud and clear in New York and New Brunswick Cuba on 97.10. There's something on 98.19. Oh, look at that. So there's a station on 9820. But there's a tone that I can go down to 9819. And it's so the tone would be Radio 9 de Julio from Brazil. And 9820 would be some China radio in some way. Chinese Beibu Bay Radio or China Business Radio, one of the Chinese, I know it's, but definitely a carrier on 9819 from a Brazilian. So 
So if I put myself in lower sideband, can't say I'm hearing any voice, but I definitely, there's a carrier there. Nine zero zero. Seems to be China with an echo. So getting a kind of long path too. To be Taiwan. Radio Taiwan's there at uh, this time. On a national radio one, which is probably what I'm hearing with echo nine nine zero zero. We're going to do an experiment, guys. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave here two seconds, okay? I'm going to go on 7165 where David was. And I'm going to actually call CQ with my transceiver here. I have to go in the kitchen for that. So I'm going to call CQ, uh, Victor Echo 2 Zulu Zulu India. Uh, two times, and so uh, everybody that wants to try to, to hear me, uh, check it out. And if you can hear me, you want to contact, just check it out. We're going to do it briefly because I don't want to leave the camera too long, but uh, we're going to try this. Uh, I'm going to leave the... I'm going to leave the radio on WWV quietly here. And I'm going to be on 7165, um, and I'm going to call CQ twice. So if you guys want to try it, 7165, um, lower sideband. And uh, I'm going to call right now. So, here we go. Yeah, I have nothing on 7165 here, so probably kind of not in my, uh, I, I listened for a, a little while, but um, it's possible that, uh, so, anyways, that was a try. Oh, I didn't hear the VE2 station. 
Maybe it's too close. I don't know. Because I didn't hear the the V2. Uh, I didn't hear anybody call back, but noise level is so high that it's easy for me. And that is the biggest problem. It's easy for me to miss somebody calling back at me uh, because the noise level is so high on my um, FT. Uh, so, um, you know, my um, FT450. Dr. Sisop, 12.30 a.m. ZFB, Bermuda mixing in. Uh, WF7 Iombrew, hearing some DX station, 7165 in Virginia. Uh, what else do we have? Tom DX, we got you here in southern New York State. WF7 Iombrew, Bert says, I can hear you, but you're covered up by a DX station. Brian Penny heard you 55 calling CQ from the official shortwave channel. So that's pretty cool. Cape Cod. Nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? So Bill heard someone responding to me. What else do we have? Yeah, that's possible that my St. Gian was overloaded. <laughs> Even though the antennas are complete opposite, it's totally possible. Yeah, I didn't hear you, V2 of GJ. J Projects, you were um, 57 on... K3FEF web SDR. Yeah, especially for the West Coast, uh, 40 meters is not yet. I would have uh, I would have made it on the West Coast on 20 meters probably uh, this afternoon. I was hearing uh, stations all over uh, uh, the West Coast this afternoon on 20 meters. Um, what else do we have? San Faro, 7220, Radio Romania, interval signal. Let's check it out here, 7200, 7220, sorry. Yeah, with some hams at the same time. Hello, I'm going to ask you a little bit 5960, voice of Turkey, but it's not very good. There's some kind of hum. Not very good, voice of Turkey tonight. That hum is weird. Oh yeah, I wouldn't, I'm not surprised that my receivers here in the front could be overloaded by this. Jason Francis, nice to have you here. Yeah, but like people say, there was somebody else. I didn't hear anybody on the frequency, but it could, there, there could have been some other stations too. Um, hey, Tom the extra, take care. Dr. Sisab didn't hear me. Um, yeah, big hum on Turkey right now. 5960. Really, uh, really loud. Let's check out the 25 meter band out of curiosity, 11500 and up. Eleven five two five, very strong. CNR one jammer, because Radio Free Asia is there. So it's the CNR one jammer.
Very strong Brazil on 11 7 8 0. Um, four four six two. Uh, yeah, if it's uh like a chirp chirp signal, a little bit like this, like this. That's Kodar, which is an ocean, ocean type radar. They check the uh, ocean waves, uh, current directions, things like that. It's a type of radar. It's definitely a type of radar. Five nine nine five. Yep, yeah, it's Mali is up to zero hundred uh, UT on that frequency, uh, usually. Tony, greetings from southwest coast of Ireland. Uh, Voice of Turkey, it's 9 plus 30 with a loud hum. David, uh, let me just move them here. Glad you have a radio in your kitchen again, just like the good old days. Couldn't have left radio less <laughs> for much longer. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the best place for me right now for the ham radio because it's an easy way out for the antenna and the, the coax. So it's the easiest for me right now. Uh, Daniel says, uh, Daniel Mark, uh, I've been out of the hobby for years and getting back into it. Can you suggest a new alternative to the old passport to world band radio? Uh, the best alternative is really, really online. Now, uh, there's tons of uh, resources for schedules. The internet is your best friend right now. Uh, that's where you'll have all the stuff that you need. There are many websites, um, that you can check out. Um, if I, out of just like this, first of all, one of the big websites that's very nice to check, swling.com, there's a Thomas Witherspoon's website. They have uh, the schedules, uh, shortwave.info. You have eibispace.de. These are all places where you'll get all sorts of uh, information of what's on the air and so on. Uh, for sure. Unknown, yeah. DRM on 6040 is Radio Romania DRM broadcast. Uh, here I see DRM. I see DRM. Um, and I see Radio Romania pop up, but the audio never gets... It's not strong enough for the audio. Uh, Harold, uh, I heard you very low here in the Long Island, New York, on my Texan 880. Wow. Cool. Cool. Uh, so there's quite a few things that you can um, you can check out. Um, I've checked the buzzer. Do I hear the buzzer tonight here? Four six two five. Maybe a little early for it, but let's try it. Buzzer, Russian buzzer. I'm hearing the uh, RWN time signal either. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, take care, Chris Powell, hey, E0IY. So uh, what else do we have? Checking out here. Let me put the camera up here for a little more. So, um, no, I'm not on the one six on seven one six five anymore. Um, I've moved, uh, I've, I've, I'm back here, so I can't, I, as, I only can do it in the kitchen since the transceiver is in the kitchen, which makes it a very uh, difficult task moving from here to the kitchen. Uh, so, 
Yeah, it, you know, it's different. If you haven't been on shortwave, Daniel, for such a long time, uh, the, the there is a big difference. CB band, CB band. Let's check it out here. CB band. We're going to start at uh, 26965. 26965. And we're going to check out the band. CB band. Anything on CB right now? It's a little bit of skip. Not very strong from what I see, but it's there on channel six. But overall, very quiet. As for the time signal, 3330. CHU. 7850. Nope. Well, very weak. It's there, but very weak. 14,670, nothing. WWV, 25,000 kilohertz. Nope. It's there on 20 megahertz, 20,000 kilohertz. It's pretty good on 15 megahertz, 15,000 kilohertz. Ten megahertz and nothing on five. But these were the checks. These were the checks. Uh, take care, John Beckham. Always nice to be here. And uh, what else do we have? Pirates on sixty-nine ten upper sideband. Let's check it out here. 6910 upper sideband. 6910. I see something there. Yeah. 6910. Hour earlier at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, beginning Monday, September 25th. Really strong. Very, very strong. But first, here is the latest news from other parts of the world. News which occurred while Congress gathered in the special session. Close attention is directed at Romania today. There, the premier, Armand Kalinescu, has been assassinated. This led to reports that important developments, perhaps of a revolutionary nature, are underway in the Romanian capital, Bucharest. But up to this moment, there is very strong pirate, 6910. One thing for sure, uh, Daniel, is that um, you're at the right place if you want uh, and need help in radio and coming back into the hobby. There's another pirate on 69. Six nine two five lower sideband. Something strong in Spanish on six nine two five lower sideband. <coughs> so let's go back sixty nine ten. Man, sixty nine ten is booming here. Dwayne, 6910, good copy in Tennessee. 
Take care, Robert Cross. No problem there. JJH, 7165, lower side, been rocking now. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Sisop, as long as the pirates don't interfere with something important, they don't really care. Man, look at that. It's it's maxing out my nice signal level indicator on the on the uh, the Saint G in here. Look at that. Damn, it is reeled out. I don't know where that guy's located, but dang. Well, last time you were under front of radio, 2009, so you have seen the decline and the change of, of the radio since uh, the 80s up to 2009, so you won't have too much of a shock. The shock is big for people that left, you know, like in the 80s and come back and, 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 in 2022, and they're like, whoa, okay, this is different. But still a lot to, uh, there's still a lot to... Uh, to monitor, honestly. As you've seen tonight, anyways, we're tuning around and uh, lots of stuff here. Take care, uh, Bert, WS7I homebrew. Uh, one last thing that I want to say again about what's happening later this month. And, uh, and we're here twice a week, by the way, uh, Daniel. Uh, we're here on Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, zero hours UTC, technically Thursday UTC. And we're here on Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern starting next week because of the time change. But it's 20 hours universal time. Uh, once again, just uh, to tell everybody, uh, we've reached a peak of 232, by the way. I saw 232 people watching at the same time today. It was nice. Uh, Zoom meeting. If you want to uh, join us at the end of the month, the official SWL channel in um, partnership with the Canadian International DX Club, thanks to Sheldon Harvey. Uh, we are going to have a Zoom meeting for all of us. You have to register to the meeting. So if you want to be here, simply go to the link that I am posting, enter your name and your email, and you'll receive an email back that's going to tell you uh, the passcode, all the info you need to connect. It's going to happen on Sunday, March 27th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 19 hours universal time. I hope to see a lot of you there, see faces I've never seen before. Don't worry if you don't want to have your face because your camera's shy. You can just have a microphone and, you know, talk to us. It's all right. Uh, just... Uh, be there. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to have a a roundtable discussion and, and, and an overall discussion of radio and uh, share into that uh, Zoom meeting coming up at the end of the month. So hope that you join us for that. Uh, Alex says, solar activity is good at the moment on HF bands. Absolutely. Absolutely. Solar flex above 100. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, I don't see VOA or even BBC sad. You're on my schedule. Yeah, BBC and uh, so earlier today we had a BBC on 5875 at the beginning when we started tuning, by the way. But uh, BBC and Voice of America is still on shortwave a lot. They're just broadcasting to Africa and Europe and, and, and you know, Middle East, Asia and so on. But there are quite a few BBC frequencies that make it well here. Um, they've had a transmissions actually for Ukraine. So um, check the schedules and tune around. You'll you'll see. And I think this is probably your best place to kind of restart if you want, because if you have questions or anything, um, you know, we're here for that. And we're here to help everybody. So uh, for sure. So uh, 65 registered, says Sheldon. Not bad. Not bad. And this is going to be a lot of fun uh, when we get there at the end of the month, for sure. 
So we've been on for uh, three hours and 15 minutes. And um, as Sheldon, it's time for dinner. Actually, uh, for me, it's time to cook dinner. I'll be uh, cooking myself shepherd pie for tonight. So the time it takes to cook and eat will be later tonight. So uh, I'll be on the radio anyways. Don't forget, guys, there's the Facebook group, which is a great place if you want to continue sharing. So um, Facebook dot com slash um, official SWL channel. So the SW, official SWL channel, same name as here on Facebook. Uh, just join us and uh, continue sharing there. Ask questions. Once again, great place for newcomers in the hobby. And uh, hope that you enjoyed the show today. So I'll be continuing to listen after I eat with the radio. And... Um, <laughs> Alan, you're going to wait for a long time if you entered the room. <laughs> it's only on March 27th. So uh, take care, my friends. Stay safe. Hope that you enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, always fun to be here. Uh, we've reached 132. Uh, always cool to be here. We'll be back on uh, Wednesday. Remember once again that because of the time change, you might find that our shows are an hour later. It's not, you know, we don't change our UTC. Uh, UTC always stays the same. It's just that, you know, we're moving clocks ahead in North America tonight. So um, it's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, zero hours UTC on Wednesday. That's going to be Saturday, next Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's 20 hours Universal Time. Take care, my friends. Stay safe. Always fun to be here. Hope you enjoyed the show tonight. As usual, take care, all of you. And uh, see you soon for another live show on the channel. Bye-bye, everybody. Love you all.